Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. I think like many of you and many of the voters I meet every day, I was tired of political powers that be the ward bosses dictating not only the policies, but who should actually run for office. So that's one thing. I also found it disheartening that a lot of our elected officials um, were not acting as true public servants and representative of the people. And I think that's something that inspired me really to run. I know that government and politics can be used to do public service, and unfortunately it's not always that way. So I'm running to change that, change the culture of corruption, kind of bring government a little bit outside, out of the back rooms and out in the open where it belongs. And I. I'm uh, not naive enough to pretend that I alone can do that, but I definitely have seen on the north side and elsewhere and throughout the state that we're slowly getting to a place where we do see more independents and progressives running and winning. I guess I first knew I was a Democrat somewhere around second grade, and for those of you who have math skills, you can figure out how old I am. But in 1976, Jimmy Carter was running for president, and we had a mock election in our class, so we got to choose if we wanted to be a Republican or a Democrat. Obviously, everyone wanted to be a Republican because the elephant is so much cooler than the donkey. But I personally, a couple of girlfriends and I decided to be Democrats because we thought Amy Carter was so cool. She was about our age with the pigtails and the freckles. We wanted to be just like her. So that's how it all started. Um, <laughs> but I did continue to be active in the Democratic Party. I was a page for the Iowa Democratic Caucus, actually, in high school, which was an amazing opportunity to first get the feel of a state legislature. And I worked for a... Uh, a groundbreaking woman named, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Iowa politics, Minette Doderer. She was just an amazing woman, really taught me a lot about, you know, what it's like to be a woman in politics back when she started in the 70s. And, you know, there's a lot of positive changes, but we still have a long way to go on that front. But she was really influential for me in the early years. I went to University of Iowa, worked for Dukakis there, was involved with the student newspaper there covering the political beat, which was pretty exciting. Uh, from there, I went to law school and at Drake University in Des Moines. And I got pretty involved with politics there as well. I was a member of um, the more progressive organization in law school, and there were like four of us. Whereas the Federalist Society uh, had like 30 members, and they all loved Rush, Rush Limbaugh, and it was crazy, and we were, we'd have our little pizza parties, there'd be three or four of us. But it was, it was a fun exercise in, in uh, you know, advancing your goals. We always did a voter registration drive, and... It was, a, it was a great experience kind of starting from the ground, bringing an organization up. Um, in 1992, I got involved with the Bill Clinton campaign, and I was a young uh, person in politics. It was such an exciting time. I also worked that year at the Iowa ERA effort, and unfortunately, that didn't even come close to passing. So it was a, it was a, a mixed bag in 92. Um, my first actual paid political job was working for the Iowa Democratic Party in 1994. That, as many of you who are old enough to remember, 1994 was not a good year for Democrats. Um, I don't take all the blame, though. I kind of blame the Newt Gingrich and those guys, but it was a, a bit of a rough year. Um, after that, I moved to Chicago, hoping to find some solace away from Iowa and the Iowa Democratic Party, and was registering to vote on Diversity Avenue and got hooked up with a group of young Democrats, DL21C, which is still around. But now, for some reason, they seem so much younger than when I was in it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up working for um, Jeff Schoenberg, then a state representative, now a state senator. And I did uh, his campaign in 96, got involved in his legislative office, and it was pretty much there that I got that thing they call the bug and there was no returning. So I worked in Springfield after that as an attorney for the House of Representatives. And we worked on all kinds of issues with legislators from throughout the state. There were no jobs for uh, Democrats in Illinois state politics in the late 90s at all. It was all Republicans at the time. So I went back to practice law, but never uh, lost my interest and continued to volunteer on many uh, Democratic campaigns throughout the years. When Lisa Madigan ran in 2002, I was real excited uh, about Lisa's uh, candidacy. I got real involved in her campaign and ended up being hired as her first legislative director. I thought it was a really great opportunity to see how you can use public uh, service and public uh, government service to really do good for people. Some of the issues we worked on, uh, it was really an amazing pro-consumer, uh, pro-people uh, pro agenda. She, was a peop she really termed herself as the people's attorney, and we really did do that in Springfield. We worked on issues such as lifetime supervision of sex offenders, which we found that a lot of sex offenders that were deemed um, 
I, there's a term, I don't recall it offhand, that we're really doing as predators. We're, we're really falling between the cracks in terms of monitoring. That's an important step that she focused on, and we worked on that. We also worked to um, do a myriad of consumer protections. We worked on the Fair Debt Collection Act. It's amazing what the practice is. You feel like you're okay. We've already covered debt collection practices, but it's not true. We did a lot of things to close some loopholes in debt collection practices. I know health care is a big issue for you. We didn't address the single-payer issue per se in her office, but we did focus on a package of bills. Uh, one called the Charity Care Act, and that would require nonprofit hospitals that were getting a big, or I'm sorry, hospitals that were getting a big tax benefit that weren't providing their their share of charity care services. So we really focused on that a lot. Unfortunately, we're not successful ultimately with that bill, but that's still a work in progress. The other bill that worked with that, though, streamlined um, hospital billing practices. We talked to one woman who testified who had a. Uh, a hospital bill, literally, she brought in this high for her husband being ill with cancer. So we were able to do a lot in terms of streamlining and making things just more consumer friendly. And, and I had the opportunity at that time to really advance the bills. So it, from introduction to passage to lobbying the bills on the floor, working with members on both sides of the aisle, really had uh, real life uh, on the ground opportunity to work on legislation and see the positives that you can do for people in the General Assembly. You know, as part of this job with uh, Lisa's office, I was able to work and fight the special interests every day. And many, many times we succeeded through hard work and coalition building with many of the members of the General Assembly that you work, you guys know real well. Um, the three things I think that make me most qualified, uh, kind of threefold. First of all, I am a true independent. No one put me up to run. No one is dictating uh, how my campaign should go. No one will tell me how to vote. Uh, it doesn't matter who writes me a check, who endorses me. I'm answerable only to the voters. And that feels really good to go to the doors or at the L stops, look someone in the eye and tell them that because that's really the truth. I would not be working this hard and going without sleep and food and everything else if I, if I had to vote the way someone else wanted me to. And so it feels good to be an independent, and that's I wouldn't have it any other way. Number two, I have a unique quality that a lot of independents don't have is that I am um, experienced. So unlike my um, people I'm running against, I do I have worked to pass bills in Springfield. I know what it takes. So instead of being just a yes vote on the issues that we all care about, I can actually work to advance those bills and get you know other legislators on board and really work on behalf of building coalitions on the issues we care about. I think the experience is helpful. Um, finally, um, I, I'm asking for your endorsement too because I really think we can win. We are truly going against the machine in this race, and I knew that. If I didn't know it before, I knew it before. But I knew it Saturday when I was walking to precinct and I was talking to a great guy. It was right out in the corner of Irving and Rockwell, that precinct there in the 47th Ward. Talking to a guy who was a retired city worker. Nice conversation. He ended up uh, agreeing to support me. thought he and his wife would be real supportive of me. I live just a couple blocks away. And as I was wrapping up my conversation with him, a truck pulls up with three big burly guys, nothing against big burly guys, but with signs from one of my opponents, promptly placed one in his yard. And I said, you're not going to take one of my signs? He's like, oh, signs don't matter. We put those there every year. So that really was the machine at work. And, and we are really running against the machine there. But the difference is we can beat the machine in the 11th district. We can do it. We're, making, we're getting momentum. We're getting people coming off the street to work for us. And it's a really exciting time.